Member for Light. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today I'd like to uh, bring to the uh, House's attention of uh, one of the events which has returned to Gawler, uh, which was missing for a couple of years but as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Ms. Mr. Speaker, every year uh, the two Rotary Clubs of Gawler, the Gawler Rotary Club and the Gawler Light Rotary Club, uh, combine to actually uh, hold the uh, village fair. Uh, and at the village fair is held actually in Pioneer Park at the northern end of Murray Street uh, on the first Sunday in November of each year. The event was first held in 1976 uh, and, as I mentioned, uh, uh, run by the two Rotary Clubs with support from the town of Gawler. Uh, the aim of the village fair is to enable local organisations to raise much needed funds and showcase their activities to the wider community. The Rotary Clubs uh, provide publicity during the weeks leading up to the fair uh, and also help um, provide uh, three by three marquees, covered stores, trestles and also organise entertainment. And Mr Speaker, I can say I was one of the store holders this year as I have been in past years. Uh, participation for community organisations is free and participants uh, retain all their takings. Uh, Mr. Mr Speaker, the event is actually held to, uh, as a way of actually trying to get also local organisations to fundraise much needed funds. And I understand this year uh, the event raised somewhere between $19,000 and $20,000 and it was extremely well attended, uh, partly because it was the first event in three years and secondly we had some wonderful weather on that particular Saturday which actually brought out all the people uh, to, to, the, uh, to the village fair itself. Uh, there's a large, broad range of organisations which are, are part of the village fair, uh, and the funding categories have been represented in the past: community support service groups, uh, disability support, entertainment display, schools and play groups, church groups, environmental groups, art and craft groups, recreation, uh, and services for the elderly, amongst many others. Stores are also there to sell food and drink, local produce, plants, trees and shrubs, arts and crafts, novelties, and a large, large range of second-hand items. And I think, Mr Speaker, I think every store almost actually has a raffle. And so as you go around, it's quite an expensive event to visit every store at the actual um, village fair. But importantly, all these, all these funds go into uh, important local projects. Mr Speaker, uh, entertainment demonstrations include, the, uh, include organisations like the Gawler Town Band, the Gymnastic Club, the Dog Obedience Club, and the Gawler, uh, Gawler Car Club. And from time to time, various school bands and other groups also provide entertainment. The Rotary Clubs, uh, combined with the Gawler Art Society, or in conjunction with local schools, also organise a junior art exhibition, which has been particularly successful. And I noticed this year there are quite a few artworks presented and quite a few people visiting. Since its inception in 1976, the Village Fair has enabled local community organisations to raise in excess of $600,000 for community projects. Uh, the organising uh, clubs uh, uh, have to meet a whole range of local government uh, and state government local, uh, health and safety obligations, which makes sure that uh, the event is actually uh, accessible to all, all, all people, and particularly those people who have some sort of lived uh, disability. Uh, in terms of actually uh, accessing, uh, sorry, setting up their venues for the day, uh, there are a number of volunteers and, and hundreds of volunteer hours organised by, organised by Rotarians uh, to set up the, the various stores for the community to benefit. During the day, staffing and managing the event site requires a large number of Rotarians at all times and cleaning up is a major operation. Uh, Mr Speaker, it would be fair to say that the, the Gawler Village Fair is a major event attracting thousands of people and also supporting a lot of community organisations in our town. With a few moments I have left, Mr Speaker, I'd just like to take this opportunity to congratulate uh, those new elected members in my, in my uh, uh, electorate. Uh, my electorate covers three council areas, uh, so I'd like to congratulate uh, in the Light, District, uh, Light Regional Council, Alison Emery and Michael Phillips Ryder, uh, whose ward covers my uh, electorate. In Gawler, uh, I'd like to congratulate Isaac Solomon, Ethan White, Helen Hennessy and Mick Lorner as new councillors, and in the city of Playford, um, Mr. Speaker, the new, one of the new councillors whose ward is in my electorate is uh, the new councillor is Chantelle Carlson. Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, it's interesting. One of the wards now has all women 
all, all women uh, uh, councillors, and that uh, we we'll also have a couple of councillors who are either under the age of 21 years. So it's great to see a much diverse uh, local government in my area. Question for the chair.